Hi, today we are going to start with a very important topic hydrogen chloride and hydrochloric acid. It is a very important topic in our ICC 10th standard syllabus. Generally, it comes in the exam for 6 to 8 marks or 4 marks also. Now, very important topic we are starting with the first how do you prepare hydrogen chloride? General method. Now the first if you will see hydrogen gas which is a colorless, odorless gas combines with a greenish yellow highly poisonous gas in presence of diffused sunlight to give HCl gas, hydrogen chloride. We carry out this reaction in presence of diffused sunlight and moisture is used as a catalyst. Now this reaction cannot be carried out in dark because reaction will be too slow and at the same time we cannot carry out in direct sunlight otherwise reaction will become explosive so hydrogen which is colorless odorless neutral gas chlorine which is greenish yellow poisonous gas and combined in presence of diffuse sunlight to give hydrogen chloride gas now moisture is used as a catalyst that just for your knowledge, I am sharing this reaction. Now we will start with the important reaction, hydrogen chloride gas, how it is prepared in the laboratory, 4 marks question. Now, if you will see again laboratory method of preparation of hydrogen chloride, this is a diagram based question. In the examination, you might be given diagram and you will be asked diagram based question. The first question, which are the reactants? we are using for the preparation of HCl gas in the laboratory. The reactants are sodium chloride plus we are using concentrated sulfuric acid. The reason of selecting sodium chloride because it is cheap and easily available. We are selecting concentrated sulfuric acid. Reason because it is non-volatile, it has a high boiling point. Sodium chloride and sulfuric acid, these are the two reactants which we are using for the preparation of hydrogen chloride gas. We mix them in the round bottle flask, supplying heat energy. Now, when we start forming HCl gas, which we pass through a washing bottle and then we collect the hydrogen chloride gas. Now, we will study this reaction in detail. At temperature less than or below 200 we are using for the preparation of hydrogen chloride gas in the lab. The first reactant is sodium chloride NaCl. Again I am repeating the answer for it. Sodium chloride is cheap and easily available salt. Concentrate sulfuric acid because it is a non-volatile and it has a high boiling point so it can easily displace highly volatile gas HCl from the salt. Now the condition which you have to mark it that the temperature should be less than 200 degrees Celsius. You have to make it sure the temperature should not exceed to more than 200. The sulfuric acid which we are using it is concentrated sulfuric acid. So sodium chloride NaCl plus concentrated H2SO4 temperature less than 200 degrees Celsius and we are getting sodium hydrogen sulfate or sodium bisulfate plus hydrogen chloride gas. This sodium bisulfate is also called as acid salt because there are two hydrogen H2SO4 I can write HHSO4 out of that only one H is replaced by sodium and we have got NaHSO4 which is called acid salt. Why do we keep temperature less than 200 degrees Celsius? What is the reason behind it? If we keep temperature more than 200 degrees Celsius, then the first, your apparatus may break. Second, there is a wastage of fuel. And very, very, very important reason is that when you keep, when you mix NaCl and H2SO4, and when you keep temperature more than 200 degrees Celsius, you get Na2SO4 sodium sulfate plus hydrogen chloride. Now this sodium sulfate which is formed is hard, insoluble, sticky marks. It is very difficult to remove. It stick to the apparatus and that is why we never keep temperature or we never allow the temperature to rise more than 200 degrees Celsius. Again we will see the laboratory preparation of hydrogen chloride gas. Which are the reactant? Sodium chloride 
plus concentrate sulfuric acid. Very important to mention it is concentrated. So sodium chloride concentrate sulfuric acid. Temperature we keep less than 200 and we get sodium hydrogen sulfate and HCl in the gaseous form. We select sodium chloride. Again we are repeating for our knowledge that sodium chloride is cheap, easily available. Concentrated sulfuric acid because it is non-volatile, it has a high boiling point, so it can easily displace HCl gas. Temperature below 200, we never allow to rise temperature more than 200 degrees Celsius because if the temperature is above 200, you again I am repeating apparatus may break wastage of fuel and from sodium sulfate which is hard insoluble sticky mark and difficult to remove. As we move further, we can see reactants, sodium chloride, concentrated sulfuric acid, purification. The drying agent which we are using is concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay. Now what is the drying agent? Now if we will come back to the original picture that HCl gas which is evolved, it has some moisture in it. So that is why when we pass to you, this contains concentrated sulfuric acid again. So we are using twice concentrated sulfuric acid. One time it is used as a reactant and second time it is used as a drying agent. Since HCl is an acidic gas, so we take concentrated sulfuric acid to dry it. So concentrated sulfuric acid is a drying agent, it absorbs moisture and from here we collect HCl gas which is dry hydrogen chloride gas. So that was a purification part, the drying agent uses concentrated sulfuric acid. Another drying agent we have in our syllabus is CaO, calcium oxide. But we can't use calcium oxide to dry hydrogen chloride gas because quicklime or calcium oxide reacts with hydrogen chloride gas and forms salt and water. It will react with hydrogen chloride gas. That is why we are not selecting drying agent calcium oxide. After that collection, dry hydrogen chloride gas is collected by the upward displacement of air. Why it is collected by upward displacement? Because it is heavier than air. It is denser than air. So HCl gas will settle down and hydrogen chloride gas will settle down and air will go up. If you will see the diagram that HCl gas, hydrogen chloride is getting settling down and air is moving up. So that is why we say the HCl gas is collected by upward displacement of air. At the same time, we cannot collect HCl gas over water because in water it is highly soluble. So that is why it is collected by upward displacement of air since it is heavier than it is denser than air. We cannot collect it over water because it is highly soluble in water. How will you identify that the given gas which we have made in the laboratory is HCl only? If you will see, I want to prove that this jar containing HCl gas only. What I will do? I will take a glass rod. I will take a glass rod, dip it into a solution of ammonia. When I dip this glass rod dip in ammonia, bring it near the gas jar containing HCl. So, ammonia is the only gas in your syllabus which is basic in nature, combined with HCl which is acidic gas and from NH4Cl which is solid. So, by combining two gases, you are forming one solid. It's the only reaction in your syllabus where one solid is formed by combining two gases, ammonia and hydrogen chloride. So children, we will see the summary of the reaction. First, laboratory preparation of HCl. The reactant which we are taking is sodium chloride, concentrate sulfuric acid. Temperature obviously less than 200, above 200. Reaction will not be allowed because fuel is wasted, apparatus may break and it forms sodium sulfate which is high insoluble mass. The drying agent, very important for one mark, concentrate sulfuric acid. When they are asked, name the following, please don't give the formula, right? Concentrate sulfuric acid is used as a drying agent, it absorbs moisture and the air will, HCl gas will be dry. How do you collect the gas? The gas is collected by upward.
called displacement of air. Why? Because it is heavier than air. The question is, can you connect it over water? Obviously no, because hydrogen chloride is highly soluble in water. How will you identify that the given gas is HCl? You will take a glass from depth in ammonia, bring it near the gas in HCl, you will get dense white fumes of ammonium chloride, which is solid. Move further, when we will see, now at temperature above 200, which we have discussed, when we take more than 200, you can see the reaction. Now, in this reaction, you all can see that it forms Na2SO4 plus hydrogen chloride gas. Temperature of more than 200, what happens? See here, the same what we have said, fuel is wasted, the glass apparatus may crack or break or it forms sodium sulfate, this is the normal salt which is hard crust, stick to the gap, glass and is difficult to remove. Now, physical properties. First, we are going to prove that hydrogen chloride gas is colorless, having pungent odor and highly soluble in water. It fumes in air. Why? Because it is highly soluble, so it forms a moist or droplets in atmosphere since it is highly soluble. Now, we are going to study, we are going to prove that two properties of HCl gas, HCl gas Two properties. One is it is highly soluble in water, and the second property it is acidic in nature. For proving these two properties, we use the experiment, and this experiment is called fountain experiment. Two to three marks question again. Name the type of experiment or identify the experiment. It is fountain experiment. It is used to prove two properties of HCl. It is highly soluble in water and acidic in nature. Let's study how to study this fountain experiment. How it works? We take inverted round bottom flask. This inverted round bottom flask has two openings. One for the jet tube. This is called jet tube with two open ends. And another for a dropper which is filled with water. And this round bottom flux is filled with dry HCl gas. So for proving this two property, we are using fountain experiment. Now, fountain experiment when we are using, we have taken round bottom flask with two openings. One is a dropper filled with water and another with the jet tube which is placed one end of the jet tube is in the blue litmus solution and another inside the round bottom flask. Now, what we will do? We will just press this dropper. When we will press the dropper, water will come out. When water comes out, the HC gas present inside the round water flask will get dissolved in that water. Now, the, what will happen? The partial vacuum will be created inside this round water flask. So, outside pressure is more. So it will force this blue litmus solution to enter into this jet tube. And since entering of this blue litmus solution into the jet tube proves that gas is highly soluble in water. How? Because it was filled with dry HCl gas. When I have squeezed the dropper, water came out and the gas is dissolved in a water. After since more gas is dissolving in a water, inside this the pressure will be less. Partial vacuum will be created, hence it will force this blue litmus solution to enter into this jet tube. So entering of this blue litmus solution into jet tube proves that HCl gas is highly soluble in water. At the same time, when it comes out, since the gas is already acidic, you get red fountain. So blue litmus is getting converted into the red fountain. It's a very beautiful experiment. When you can see on the YouTube also, it's a very nice experiment. There are two gases, hydrogen chloride and ammonia, which we can prove by this property that they are highly soluble in water. Now, some school or some examiners may ask, instead of blue litmus solution, if you are using methyl orange or if you are using alkaline phenolphthalein, then which color fountain do you get? So, the indicators which show the color change in acid and depending on that, we have to keep on changing the color of the fountain. So, we have proved two fixed things, HCl highly soluble, acidic in nature, the name of the experiment is fountain experiment 
and the color of the fountain which we get is a red fountain. Now, children, if you will see effect on different indicators, you can see children indicator color change original moist litmus original color blue final red you have to remember like this acid red so in the acid final color is always red methyl orange original orange final color pink in 2008 in the board question they have asked give the color of the indicator though it looks very simple question but you have to remember the color change blue to red, orange to pink, methyl orange, phenolphthalein which is colorless and after adding into as also colorless and alkaline phenolphthalein which is pink in color and after adding to acid it becomes colorless. So now we will be looking for the next slide preparation of hydrogen chloride gas into acid. Okay, so we will be seeing in the next slide hydrogen chloride gas into hydrochloric acid by the simple experiment funnel experiment